So now I want to talk about the Green New Deal and something else in here that I've been working on for a few years that ties into this, directly ties into this. So what is the Green New Deal? Well, the Green New Deal, if anybody knows about history and FDR, the New Deal, the original New Deal, was a government program that provided jobs to people who were out of work during the Great Depression. So they started rebuilding the infrastructure, you know, uh, upgrading the rails and building new roads, uh, you know, building dams and reservoirs and uh, more electric infrastructure. Everything needed that we take for granted today was a result of the New Deal. So what the Green New Deal was, or is, is essentially the conversion away from fossil fuels into green renewable energy. Now I've heard, of course, from a lot of people that, oh my God, it's so expensive, we'll never be able to afford that, come down to earth, Marcus. Well, these people obviously have not done the research, they don't know what they're talking about, but I digress from that argument. The Green New Deal would have us basically go throughout our entire society, our entire country, and refit everything. Refit our, our roads and our bridges, you know, they're falling apart anyway, that's needed. Uh, refit our electrical grid, refit our um, uh, refit our cars, in particular, you know, because all the cars would be electric, basically. Um, you know, re refit all homes and all buildings and dwell any kind of dwelling, really, to run on green energy. So we can be totally free of fossil fuels. Now, some say, oh, my God, again, that's too expensive. I say, you know what? With all the subsidies that we give the corporations nowadays... Those alone could pay for the Green New Deal. Just the bailouts alone could have paid, at least mostly, for the Green New Deal over 10 years. And it's not so much about adding additional costs. I know there was a number Fox News came out with uh, about a year or two ago, something like that. AOC had this plan of Medicare for All blended with a Green New Deal, and Fox had this crazy number like oh my god it's 93 trillion dollars oh my god what a commie she's so irresponsible ah. of course that's what they'll, that's what they do they fear fear monger all day long don't take them seriously <laughs> but anyway when i did when i crunched the numbers on it um i took the 93 trillion and i said okay well let's take into account the fact that this is mostly recycled money okay the 93 trillion assuming that's even the number it's it's more it's not even going to be that it's probably going to be closer to 16 trillion or something like that you know with existing funding in various companies and incentives for co-ops uh, municipal internet things like that that can come into effect uh, but that 93 trillion let's just use that for argument's sake okay a lot of that 93 trillion is just recycled money so the 93 trillion is the result of oh let's say originally the whole you know, Originally, these companies now are bringing in combined about, oh, 50 trillion, for argument's sake, over 10 years, okay? Well, what happens there is the other 43 trillion is artificial, okay? It's the result of other companies and co other consumers investing their money in these companies by buying their products and services, sometimes even investing, um, and artificially inflating that number as a result. Now, what they're not going to tell you is that the 93 trillion that ensues from that is going to go down when these companies have to spend the money that's made to pay the employees which then that money transfers part of that 93 trillion transfers to the working people who then up their numbers artificially and then they have the money to inject back into the economy so it's it's cycling okay it's recycled money it's not additional money this is the trick they throw at you i know joe biden uh, did that with Bernie once when he, Bernie mentioned Medicare for all. Medicare for all is only going to be thirty trillion dollars. We know, we know. Study of University of Massachusetts Amherst showed that it would be thirty-two point six trillion, but you know, thirty trillion, whatever. Maybe he's got some had some trick up his sleeve that could reduce the cost. Um, but Joe Biden came in and it was just like, "Hey, crazy Bernie, it's going to cost eighty trillion dollars. We can't do that." Jack. <laughs> well, what Joe Biden did there, if you follow the numbers, the current system is close to $50 trillion, you know, 49 points off the national. But let's say $50 trillion, that's the current system. And it could be inflated at any time if investors choose to, you know, say, hey, we want to make more money off this, so we're just going to jack the price up by demanding more from the board of directors of all these companies and saying, we want more profit. 
And of course, they are required by law to make sure they have more profit. What happened to uh, the foundation, Workers First, right? Nah, America's never been for that, right? Freedom! And here's another thing well, before I continue. When you hear the right scream freedom, what they're really saying is their, their liberty to use the profit motive. That's what they're saying. They're not saying, oh, the jackboot of big government on their throat or something like that. No, 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 no. They just don't want to part with the wealth that they're funneling up to them. That's all that is. So anyway, back to uh, the Green New Deal here. Well, basically, um, that argument fell flat on his face to anybody who knows those issue, who knows that issue of Medicare for All because uh, they know the, the system would only cost around $30 trillion, And if you tax, legalize, and regulate all drugs, it might be even a little less. Free up the private prison system. As a result of that consolidated turn them into medical facilities, you're going to lower that cost even more, especially if you bring back house calls. So how does that fit into the Green New Deal? Well, back to that. The Green New Deal would involve refitting these facilities uh, to run on green energy. Okay, so it's multiple birds with one stone in that area. Another thing the Green New Deal would do is refocus the uh, the part of our economy that is dictating the most on our foreign policy, and that is the war machine, the military industrial complex. Uh, Kyle Kalinske did a segment of a month or so ago about Stuart Varney, or as he likes to go, Stuart Varney. Yay. Uh, because he was giddy over war profits. It was like, Dude, people are dying needlessly, and you're getting excited about that? You think it's okay that people make money off of death? What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so what we would do with these companies, first of all, we would nationalize them, okay, and we would hold these war criminals accountable. That Point number one. Point number two, those companies would then be nationalized. And then the subsidies would turn into the paychecks of the people who work there, okay? On top of what's already being paid. So it's not like your taxes would... This, is, this isn't even addressing the tax code, let's be clear. So the tax code isn't even in question at the moment. Now, um, once you do that, you would basically retrain them, refit them to, pro to uh, produce green energy products and distribute green energy products. And also, um, you would uh, break up the big tech industries and municipalize... Is that even a word? Municipalize? I don't know. But basically, you would have municipal broadband across the country. You know, these big tech companies are gouging everybody left and right. So, um, municipalize the internet. So, it basically becomes a public utility. That lowers the cost immediately. All right? And then you get um, the green energy products produced. Uh, you can go to the auto industry and have them manufacture uh, cars in the, in the way to, that they can be all electric. I have this one idea myself about... Uh, like the roof of the car or even the hood of the car or both, uh, instead of the, the kind of sleek colored top that we typically see, they would actually be solar panels on top, right? So the hood or the, the roof or both could actually just be solar panels tinted to match the rest of the paint job. And then the charge would, just by sitting out in the sun, it would charge on its own. You wouldn't even need to plug it up. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty useful in the desert, I'll bet. Um, but the other thing it would do is it would, as a result of this, you could have the air being cleaned up, the water cleaned up. Sounds great, right? Because with more cleaner water, cleaner air, there, the trees would, there would be more trees, right? And uh, as a result of that, produces more rain. Higher water table means more resources. So how can that be brought to fruition if um, the means by which we run our society being on money, it, the incentive is the opposite? How can we do that? Okay, well then we come to the hydrodollar system. Now this is something I've done a couple of videos on already, but really more sound audio files than anything else. Um, but I'll, I'll also have a link to them later on. And then uh, what you do with this is basically a replacement for the petrodollar. So how do we do that? Well, first, of, first thing you have to do is um, you have to change the way the dollar is valued. And right now, the U.S. dollar is valued using the global oil market. I mean, that started back in 1971 when Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard and did a deal with Saudi Arabia to have our dollar on the, on the Petra standard, the oil standard. And now the, the conglomerate known as OPEC basically controls how our currency is valued. So when, whenever somebody tells you that we control our own currency, 
clearly these people, clearly this person, these people, whoever they are, they're saying that don't have the full picture. Okay, so hopefully this knowledge will help them out a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but we can get it back this way, and therefore we can, on top of that, we would decentralize the banking system and uh, make it a public institution. So instead of these private banks existing to make a profit, banking would essentially be nothing more than a public storage unit for money, right? <clears throat> and now, what the hydro dollar is essentially, it's it's a currency, it's, it's money, okay, it's just money, but instead of using petroleum or gold or silver, something that you can collect and hoard to value it, now you're value, valuing it using the global water table. Now, why the global water table? And I'm not talking about just freshwater either. I'm talking like the oceans, the, the reservoirs, the groundwater, the moisture, all the water on the planet, basically. And here's the interesting part. We already have everything happening right now to make this work. We do it all the time. We just take it for granted. You know, scientists take measurements of this stuff all the time. We have these uh, numbers come into us from weather people. Um, you know, the National Weather Service, uh, even NASA probably does some of this. The USGS does this stuff. All, and across the world, other uh, equivalents, they all do it. So we have the numbers. It's just a matter of plugging them into the right formula to change the metric to percentage. And you compare that from the previous year. And the difference will give you the increase or decrease or um, the uh, the uh, the increase in value or the depreciation of value. I kept trying to find the word there of the currency. Well, well let's let's uh, go into that for a second. Let's say that this currency um, at the start of the program, its full dollar value had a hundred liters of water worldwide. International reasons because we're the only country that uses the British system. Everybody else uses the metric system. So let's say a hundred liters. Okay. Well, excuse me. Um, 100 liters, one dollar. Well, let's take the measurement a year later, and that reads 90. Okay, well, oh wait, 90. That means the dollar is now 90 cents of its full value, or 90 percent, um, 90 percent full value. So, intrinsically, what will initially cost you one dollar per capita will now be a dollar ten. Well, this in and of itself is an indicator that we need to go in the other direction because, you know, uh, the environment isn't responding well. So we have to try to nurse the environment back to health at this point, do what we can, plant trees, seed bank, do whatever we can to, to strengthen the ecosystem. Well, let's go a few years down the road and say, okay, now it was down to 90, now it's back up to 125. We've increased it a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, that means, by extension, that the dollar will now have purchasing power of a dollar twenty-five, which means that its value is at a 25 percent surplus. So this is also not only a great valuing tool, and it, it separates really the uh, the notion and the the real the reality of the current way we value money. That the more you print, that the more the less value it has. Well, that's not the case with the hydro dollar system. With the hydro dollar system, because it's a conversion of metrics to percentage, it's not using quantitative valuing as you as we did in the past and as we are right now. So in that case, in this case, what's happening is intrinsically the values, the currency's value is determined using the global water table. And the higher the water table and the more natural resources we can have, right, it works hand in hand here. The higher the intrinsic value of the currency, the more GDP we get, the more money we can print physically. Now, you can print money endlessly digitally. The Fed does this all the time. So knowing this, we can pretty much get rid of this whole debt-based system and just replace it with you know, fiat. But here's the thing. People say, well, fiat, well, that's not real money. Well, I got news for you. All currency is fiat, even gold, even silver, even oil, because we all agreed something has value. So something that has value that we know of today is not some law of nature, okay? It's something that we agreed upon years and years ago in our history, and we've just been riding this wave all wrong. So what this system does is flushes out the reality that everything's interconnected. And this is a great tool, a great gauge to use to uh, put in place to perpetuate a Green New Deal. Because the strength of the currency system, the strength of the economy as a result, would depend on our execution of a Green New Deal. So there you have it. I mean, that's how we changed the whole system. Now... 
Part of the Green New Deal, as I said before, you know, it's a global effort, but for our part, we would essentially, we would get rid of gasoline cars and go straight to electric. Um, we would have high-speed rails. I think that's a pretty great idea, especially in the major cities. Um, we would have, instead of having gas stations, we would just have charging stations wherever needed. But if cars were all solar-powered like that, they'd be endlessly charged anyway. But if you're in an area where there's not a lot of sun, uh, if it doesn't, uh, if there's too much shade or whatever, and it doesn't charge very well, well, you can have a charging station nearby. You can still either put panels out, charge them that way, or you can go to the charging station and jack it up and charge it that way. So there you have that. Now, we would also have to um, refit all the homes in the country to have green energy. Here's the interesting part about that. They're actually doing this in Germany. I forget where exactly in Germany, but um, they, they have a, a little program going on there where if homes have solar panel, panels or high, or um, what's it called, thermoelectric, I'm guessing. I know they do that in Iceland. Um, but in Germany with solar panels, what happens is if your home is fit to run on green energy, you can actually sell the excess energy that you don't use at the end of the month to an energy company, and you make a profit. The other way that can work is it can knock off some of the monthly costs of your house or even the total cost of your house. So you either save money or you make money. Either way, you win. So that's another way we transform our economy using a Green New Deal. And the hydro dollar can be a, the perfect tool to get us there. And some people say, oh, it'll never happen. The, the banksters are just too powerful. Are they really? Or are, we just, or are we just so scared of what we can't see? Think about that a second. So these, you know, people in power are only as powerful as we allow them to be. You know, the French know a thing or two about that, right? So do the Russians with the Bolshevik Revolution and whatnot. And the Scots, they know a thing or two. They rebelled against the English a lot in the past, so they know something about that. Well, let's let's understand something. It's all in it's all in our minds here. The power that all these people have is all in our minds. And we can flip this on its head with a system like this. We can make sure that the planet is nursed back to health. And not just that, but we can prosper in ways that we could never have imagined before. It's just a matter of the will to do it and having a strategy, a rollout strategy, and just being willing, willing to take it as it comes. Stop trying to look so far down the road and think, oh my God, this is too huge. One step at a time. It may seem small, just that one, two, three, four. But before you know it, you're there. That's how it works, man. Just focus. And also with the fact that uh, the hydro dollar system being implemented with a Green New Deal like this, uh, the, the cost wouldn't be a, an issue because with the hydro dollar system being implemented, you're changing the very foundation that supports your monetary system anyway. So cost isn't even a factor. So the way that would work, of course, I mentioned before, you know, with greater GDP, the more you can print physically and, well, digitally, it's in cyberspace anyway. So we could just automatically say, okay, we don't have a debt-based system anymore. Whatever exists, exists. It's worth what it's worth because we agree and because the system here dictates that, okay, well, the level is up to a certain point, and now the dollar is up to the equivalent point, or down from the equivalent point, as the case may be. All right, well, then you can print as much as you need, physically or digital. And most money is turning digital anyway, okay? I have this great idea for banking I'll get into later, but I can just go and over, do an overview right here about how, um, instead of using uh, paper cards wrapped in plastic the way we use them now, we can just go to using DNA, using our prints, whatever it might be, you know? Figure that one issue. If you want to use a retina scan, do that. You want to use a thumbprint, use that. You want to use just the whole palm, you can do that. You want to do a breathalyzer, you can do it that way. There's a lot of things to read your DNA to say, hey, this is your account. And who's going to have access to that but you? That's a lot harder to steal, okay? It's a lot harder for someone to steal your DNA like that, your thumbprint, your breath, your whole palm, whatever, than it is for someone to, to pick a card off you. So there you go, added security in that sense, right? And uh, final point on that is um, another reason to do this is to show that we as a species are moving in the right direction and we are learning from our mistakes and we're determined not to repeat them. Okay, because what's been happening throughout capitalism's history is we keep have, running into the same problems and recycling old systems and old approaches and just ending up right back where we started. We've got to stop. We've got to move past revolution and move into evolution. We have to evolve. 
So we don't need political revolution. We don't need economic revolution. We need political and economic evolution. And of course, and of course, I'll be doing um, uh, I'll be doing segments on ranked choice voting and um, uh, other other uh, segments like that. So there we have it. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. I'll be back soon.